we have already measured six inches of sea level rise since 1996, and just that six inches has already resulted in over 400% more flooding events. We are at the leading edge here of needing to find solutions to make our community resilient. A lot of these issues that we deal with are really dire, but I have seen the needle move from the work that we do here at Miami Waterkeeper, and that gives me a lot of hope that if we can have a big enough voice, we can grow the power of this community to make change and be a shining example of resilience for the entire world. All of our water is connected. This is the same water that runs off of our, our backyards, the streets. Our land-based sources of pollution end up here. Since coming to Miami Waterkeeper, I've had the opportunity to respond to different events. And in that response, what we do is come up with a very standardized protocol and we apply that so that we can get a good snapshot view of why this is happening. Everything we do in Miami Waterkeeper is science-based. We do extensive research and that requires time and technical expertise. So we sometimes need to look to a whole wide other variety of parameters to give more context. I get to advocate for my passion, which is water. And I love knowing that I contribute to sharing important science-based information about the health of our environment, for people to swim in those waters. We need to hold accountable the people that are polluting our waters so we can stop the sources of pollution. But we also need to have the science to be able to come up with possible solutions. Miami Waterkeeper has a theory of change. It starts with science, and those scientific outcomes are relayed to policy team for incorporation into good protective policy measures. We have a lot of wins and we have a lot of moments where we say, wow, our advocacy really worked. We got the county to change most of the canal spraying to mechanical harvesting and therefore not introduce dangerous, harmful chemicals that eventually migrate into the bay. In 2020, we joined a suit with the Center for Biological Diversity and Wild Earth Guardians to get NOAA to designate critical habitat for the Nassau grouper. In January of 2024, we won. It's a keystone species in our region. And this is strategic. If we protect critical habitat for the Nassau grouper, we're also protecting habitat for many other creatures that depend on the same habitat. We are working on a legal case around Turkey Point. The reactor is right in Hurricane Alley between Biscayne Bay and the Everglades, a low-lying area that is going to flood from climate change. We are trying to get the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to pay attention to this. It's critical. Building and working in coalitions is essential. I think that is our value proposition. We boil down the outcomes of our policy research into its essence, and we relay those outcomes to the community. One of the big accomplishments of the Education and Outreach Department and why I love doing this work is that we get to connect people with these amazing resources. Most of the students that we work with or take out on the boat for floating classrooms or on the beach for our Youth Environmental Action Days were born and raised in Miami or grew up here and have never been on a boat before, didn't know Biscayne Bay was here. Even though this is such a big part of our community, they've just never had opportunities. We get to educate them and help build the skills and the knowledge necessary to be advocates and warriors and champions for our waterways and our communities. Thousand Eyes on the Water is our pollution detection and reporting program. So we host community trainings around the county and educate folks on the different types of pollution. They can report it to us and then we contact the necessary agencies to resolve the pollution or issue a citation. 
We do monthly kayak cleanups right at Crandon to remove really big concentrations of trash and debris that are in our waterways. Another type of volunteer event that we do is bring folks into the hammock and the dune habitats to help the City of Miami Parks and Rec remove invasive plant species and then also plant native species. There's 160 acres of green space and the City of Miami rely on volunteers like Miami Waterkeeper volunteers to help come out and restore these habitats. We're not just bringing volunteers out to remove marine debris. We're really trying to create a movement of educated Miami residents who have the tools and the knowledge to protect our waterways in Biscayne Bay. In the end, we can serve only what we love. We love only what we understand and we understand only what we're taught. At Miami Waterkeeper, part of our power and our impact comes from being able to react. And your gift has given us the ability to be able to respond, to react, to pivot, to be there when our community and our environment needs us most.